tutorial, I'm going to show you how to auto close a page in your application after your user has become inactive after some time. This is really useful if your app is working with sensitive information, uh, your users might be using public computers, and you just want to make sure that the page gets shut down um, for security purposes or whatever other reason you might have. The point is, is we're going to close the window after some period of inactivity. Okay, so I have uh, written out these three things to keep in mind to set up this type of feature. Uh, the first thing is uh, you want to determine how often you're going to check for inactivity. Basically, what we're going to be doing is every certain number of seconds, or for you, it might be minutes, we're going to check and see when was the last time this user made some kind of a change to the database. Uh, and that's going to be our, our marker for activity is some change in, to a record. So how often are you going to check for the last time uh, they made a change? And the second thing is, what are you going to check? Is it going to be the user's record? Is it going to be uh, multiple records, you know, where any one of them had some activity on it. That's something that you need to figure out. What is going to uh, tell you if the user has been active or not? And the third thing is um, how long, uh, how much time should pass after the last modification to some record uh, should be considered um, for the user to be considered inactive. So if the last time they made a change was 60 seconds ago, is that long enough? Or is it going to be more like five minutes ago? Is that uh, a better indication that, okay, it looks like they're not actually doing anything in the application, they are inactive, so let's go ahead and close the page. That's something that you have to figure out uh, for your own app and what makes sense for you. So the example that I'm going to run through here is I'm going to update the current user's record. I'm just going to show you the workflow here real quick for what this button is doing. All I'm doing is updating my first name uh, to some random value every time I click that value, uh, th that button, uh, just so that I can make some change to the user record. Okay, and every five seconds, I'm going to check and see how long ago it was that I last updated the user record. Okay, now I'm doing a very short time frame here of five seconds just because I want to be able to show you uh, the just this demonstration a little bit faster. But for you, it might more, make more sense to do a longer interval so you that so you give the user a bit more time to actually. Um, uh, interact with the application without having to constantly be updating something. So uh, I'm going to do uh, a workflow where every five seconds it's going to check and see the last time I modified my record. If it was longer than five seconds ago, then I'm going to go ahead and close the window. Okay, so I'm going to walk through each step here. Uh, the first thing actually you should do is go to your plugin section and install this plugin. It's a free plugin called Tab Opener. Uh, it has this action to close the tab. Okay, now the first thing that happens when the page is loaded is we're going to trigger this. This is just going to run every five seconds, um, you know, until the page is closed or until the user navigates away to a different page. Uh, you can find this workflow event under uh, under the general list here, and it's due every five seconds. That's the default, but you can actually change the interval by just typing in a new number in this input there. So you can change it to 60 seconds or whatever makes sense for you. So every five seconds, we're going to trigger a custom event. Okay, so this is the action here. This is the only thing that happens every five seconds. And this is going to run no matter what. We're actually going to do the check at the custom event level. So every five seconds, we're going to trigger that custom event. To trigger a custom event, you can go down to custom events and then select this option here. And when you select that, you're going to have to choose which custom event uh, you want to run. If you have multiples, you'll see a list here. I only have one, so it automatically selected that one. So to create a custom event, you'll go to add a new event under custom and just select create a custom event. And I gave it uh, my own event name here. I just called it close tab. Okay, and you can see that the action that this event is running is that closed tab action from that plugin. So you can get there through your plugins list 
I've got it at the top of my list, close tab. Okay, so that's the action. No other settings are required to run this action. It's just gonna go. Um, but the important thing here is to add this condition to this event, right? Every five seconds, this will attempt to run, but it's only going to go through and run the action if the condition passes. So my condition that I've written out here is basically saying, if the last time I modified the user's record was greater than five seconds ago, then I want to close the tab. If it was within the last five seconds, then I am considered active and, I, and it won't pass this condition. Um, and so the tab will stay open, the, the action just won't run. So here's the expression. Take the current user's modified date, add five seconds to it, and as long as that updated date, that modified date, is still less than the current date and time, then we know that they have modified it um, long, a longer time ago. Uh, it, it could have been 20 minutes ago because 20 minutes plus five seconds is going to be still less than the current date and time. But if it was within the last five seconds, then adding five seconds would make it greater than the current date and time. So then this would not pass and the uh, tab would stay open. Okay, so I'm going to uh, do a quick preview here so you can see how it works. Um, I do have on my page a little timer so that you can actually see visually uh, the five seconds counting down. But what I'm going to be doing is uh, clicking this button to change the user's uh, name. And actually, let's just go ahead and display that so you can see the change happening. So I'm just going to show current user's first name. I'm just changing it to a string of numbers just to do something to the record. All right, so let's preview this page. All right, so you can see my counter going down. If I click, oops, I didn't click it fast enough, so let's preview it again. I'm gonna click that button to update the user record. All right, see how it changed here? and five seconds is going to elapse, but my page is not gonna close yet. So I'll click it again, and click it again, click it again. So you see that I'm, my change is not changing the timer. It's just that every five seconds is going to do that check. So as long as I keep um, updating the record within you know, the, the five second check, then my last modification date will have been recent. But if I leave it alone, then you can see that five seconds elapsed and it closed the page. All right, so that these are the three things that are uh, the, the items that will make this feature work. You need to know how often you wanna check for inactivity, um, what you are checking, so which records modification date are you going to look for, um, and how much time should it pass uh, in order to consider something inactive. Is it gonna be five seconds? Is it gonna be 20 minutes? That's, that's up to you. Uh, so the system that I'm using, again, is looking at the modification date, but you can use other systems to determine whether something has happened in the application. Uh, you can get more advanced and use custom states if um, users clicking buttons or, or clicking anything on the page is going to trigger an active movement uh, because it might not actually change something in the database, but you know, doing a search, for example, on uh, with a repeating group um, or or uh, navigating around, uh, showing and hiding groups on your page. If those aren't changing anything in your database, but it is still activity, then you're going to want to use custom states. Uh, to help you determine uh, that something has happened. You can also look into other plugins that will help you with activity status. There is one called, um, let's look it up here, this one, to detect the user's presence. They actually give you, um, they, will, they will see if the user is idle or active or not. I believe they go off of, um, mouse movements and uh, clicks, you'll have to look into the plugin a little bit more specifically to, to work with that. But there are other ways of determining inactivity or activity. But hopefully this will get you started uh, with creating a simple system just <clears throat> on the page uh, to close it automatically. 
And if you are uh, happy with this tutorial, if it helped you out, please give it a thumbs up or leave a comment below. Let us know what you think. And uh, we have many other tutorials just like this that go into specific features, walking through how to build them step by step in our VIP membership. If you're not already a member, you can read more about it in the description below. Okay, thanks for watching.